under this we had uh, definitions definition of the machine cycle and you need also to check and see how are they done so all your elect all electronics or machines they undergo certain cycle whereby you need to know how are they done so machine cycle it is the time required for fetching one byte of instruction or for or for reading from or writing into a memory location or another definition is the time required to access the memory or input stroke output device so you'll find that this machine cycle you check what is the time your electronic is taking for example you are calling somebody so you'll find that that machine cycle will record the time so the first one we call it instruction cycle it is the time required for fetching and executing one instruction or the time required to execute an instruction how you want to call somebody then from here it means uh, that calling it will take some certain time and it will take certain procedures so that fetching and execution getting the contact of a person calling him or her that is execution then apart from that we also have what we call uh, fetch or decode cycle under fetching or decoding you find that under this one again you will need if somebody calls you or send you a message you need to check and read so that reading of fetch or uh, checking it is the one we are calling fetch and decoding cycle then we have time timing diagram under timing diagram here you'll find that it will take those graphical representation so you need also to check and see these graphs those waveforms that you did in mathematics those in your timing diagram you'll be drawing them i'll give you notes so that you see them and see how do they look like then apart from that we also have the we also have the the t state under t state you'll find that the machine cycle and instruction cycle takes multiple clock periods for example if you put an air time in your phone it will take some time that is a t state if you send somebody a song through bluetooth through sender or any means again it will count that those percentages 0% 1% 10% those are the t states it will be counting those clock periods we will also be calculating we see which machine or which electronic is faster for example in mobile industry you find that an oppo infinix somebody will say this one is faster than this one so the t state is faster on that section so we have different types of machine cycle opcode memory read write memory write cycle io input output so input output is like when you put your microphones so you'll find that you need to communicate like right now we are on online learning so if you put the microphone on your ears or those speakers then you need to listen and check and see how are they done so that is under input output machine cycle then apart from the machine cycle we have so many diagrams there i'll be showing you we have what you call clock signal under clock signal we have the period even in our school uh, calendar we have a period module three takes three years module two take two years that is craft i mean they take two years and some take one year also 
inside the class, we have the lessons. They have periods. Also, these uh, our electronics or our machines, they also take time. Okay, pigia mse simu, utapata inafanya tuk, tuk, tuk. It is warning you that, A, ini meisha. Also battery. Battery kisha, it needs you to charge. It will take, tell you that, please, can you recharge? Also, you can put your calculator on or your mobile phone on. If it is not working, then it will go off. The screen will go off until you put it on. So it, all those are under clock signal and it will be communicating inside there. So during programming, we look at all those things and, and see how are they done. So that is all about machine cycle. So we need to also, after knowing the machine cycle, what are you sending? What are you reading? What are you listening? Next, we have what you call instruction format. Under instruction format, we are going to look at instruction sets and assembly language programming. Under assembly language programming, we have two types of language programming. The first one, we call it low level programming. The second one, we call it high level programming. So under level programming, we have two types again, machine language and assembly language. And what is machine language? This is the, mach the machine language is a binary, is a string or list of string of binary numbers, that is zeros and ones, which makes microcomputer to process a given data. So the machine or the electronic will only understand the machine language. But because this machine language uh, through zeros and one is DDS and error prone to human operation, we usually use hexadecimal coding. And this one you learned it in module two. Or you also use what you call symbolic notation. And this symbolic notation will bring you to what we call assembly language. And so assembly language is a collection of mnemonics which represent machine code instructions. For example, if you don't want to write the word Michuki, you can program and write Mich in short form. So whatever the machine will be looking at Mich, it will just detect this is Michuki. If you have Nairobi, that is NRB. So you shorten, that is what you call symbolic is assembly language. But we have what you call mnemonic. Mnemonic here, you'll find that under mnemonic, we have the English-like words. That is the short form of English-like words abbreviated. Like we have move, M-O-V-E. So it will be shortened as MOV, that is move. Storage, you see your machines need to store something. So you'll find that they have written STO, that is storage. And we also have others that needs also to take on the same note on that. So we need to have those uh, kinds of mnemonics under assembly language programming and in your past papers all those also we have what you call high level programming under this one is designed to be more readable by the person who is programming your colleagues in ict department most of them they use high level programming examples are basics fortran Pascal's, COPO, Visual Basic, C++, C, Java, all those languages, they are called high-level programming. And you find that even you in electrical, at your own free time, you also need to go and enroll to this one as your part-time course, and it will be a good additional certificate on your papers. So since we say that uh, our machine understands machine language, that is the low level language, 
And here, most people use high level language. Then we have two, two machine code uh, that interprets or translates into from machine language to low level or from the low level to high level that uh, interpreter and compare. So the manufacturers who manufacture these electronics, we have the inbuilt, Wanajenge and Dani, we have this interpreter or compiler. Take, for example, where you know get two, on a bigger sim, just communicate, the phone takes it, it interprets, that is from analog to digital, then it transmits to the receiver, then the receiver get it, it also changes. So we have interpreters and compilers which compile all those messages. That is all about uh, assembly, la uh, assembly language, machine language, high level language. We also have instruction set and its terms. So under this one, instruction set is a collection of all instruction available for certain microprocessor. Remember different microprocessors or different machines, they have different microprocessor instruction set. For example, we have phones that are touch screen, they have front camera, they have videos, others they are not touch screens. Even calculator, we have different types of calculators, we have different types of watch or wrist watch. So you'll find that each needs to have its own uh, instruction set. So you have mnemonics. We say that it's an abbreviated representation of English-like words. Symbolic notation is shorthand method of representing the execution of an instruction. Opcodes. Opcodes is the actual machine code for instruction purpose. Like you'll find move, add, store, all those jump, note, input, you'll find all those and, or, etc. We also have flux. We have already talked about flux register. That is the sign, carry flag, zero flag, auxiliary carry, odd parity, even parity. So we have talked about flux. Then number of bytes. This one, it allows the programmer to determine the length of the program. You'll find that if you have the lowest or small storage uh, space, you will delete some things so that a given program can be ended. Again, that one is under number of bytes. Then T states, we have already looked about T states. Under T states, you'll find that this one, it gives the number of clock cycles that you need to execute in a given cycle. Already we have talked about that, so I'm not repeat on that. Then apart from that, we also have what you call instruction format. Remember this instruction format, it has three parts or two parts. We call it the opcode, the operand, and this operand, it can be operand one or operand two. Operand here means the process that is being done by the machine. For example, if you get six plus two, then that positive sign in between, it means addition. If you get 10 minus 10, so that means the operation means there is subtraction. So you take this data minus a given data, or we have move. Move you can be using the sender Bluetooth ETC. So you are moving, copying, transferring, proving all those uh, depending on the machine, how it is done. So you need again to check and see how is it done. Then from there, you need to check also the mnemonic. Which mnemonic is being used here? Is it uh, move? Is it is it uh, jump? 
depending on which group that we are going to look in our next lesson, the, how it is done. So you need also to check on that and see. Then we also have the instruction field, of which I'll give you notes again on that. We have the name label, that is start. Opcode, that is the operation, that is move. Operand field, what is required? Is it operand one or operand two? The example that I was giving you 10 minus 10, what it gives you on that. So that is all about uh, today's lesson, guys. Uh, next time we will be looking at the instruction set of groups. And from here, then we'll do actual programming. I think from there, we'll have finished our third topic. Then we continue with our first topic. And then we resume physically. But if we don't, we'll just continue up to where we'll reach. So I'll give you these notes. I welcome the question. Otherwise, thank you for your attendance. And God bless you all. Question? Any question, please? Masharia, Oma Njuguna. Oma Dunaswali. No question. Yes. You see, I'm just, just, uh, giving you this uh, small, we are just discussing so that we see where we can reach, but actually the actual notes I'll send to you through WhatsApp and through the website of the class. Otherwise, thank you for your attendance and God bless you once again. <laughs>